Hello and welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games. And today we're reviewing Dune, the Ixians and Talaxu expansion from Gale Force 9. This expansion brings two new factions to add to the core game's six, and are based on the Ixians, who are a faction of human cyborgs with a mobile fortress, and the Talaxu, who players will remember from the core game as the faction who are in charge of the cloning tanks that revive both player soldiers and leaders. As well as two distinct factions, this expansion adds in extra mechanics such as tech tokens and the new mobile fortress of the Ixians, which also counts as an additional stronghold in which players can seize in order to win the game. The tech tokens are an extra source of income for players that hold them and indicate that they have control over a certain industry. Tech tokens can be stolen from other players as soon as their faction loses a battle to another player, and if one player controls all three tokens, it counts as one of the strongholds needed for victory at the end of the game. The Axlotl Tanks Tech Token allows the holder to collect one spice for every tech token they control when another player, including themselves, use a free revival action on the Axlotl Tanks. The Hayliners Tech Token allows the holder to collect one spice for every tech token they control when another player, including themselves, with the exception of the Spacers Guild of course, ships in forces from off-planet. And finally, the Spice Production Tech Token allows the holder to collect one spice for every tech token they control when another player, including themselves, avails of the Chum Charity Action, with the exception of course being the Bene Gesserit Faction. The tech tokens brings in a very nice variance in the game in that its income is not large enough to actively seek out, but owning all tokens is enough to catch unwary players on the hop when they do not know that a rival controls all three tokens. It brings in a nice level of subterfuge that can steal victory in a game when all players are normally just focused on stronghold control. The other big change in this game is the hidden mobile stronghold, which is a very interesting piece of real estate to own. Its mobility is useful in two major ways. Firstly, it can move towards any looming spice harvest and give its owner an easy reinforcement advantage. Or, it can simply be placed in a forgotten part of the map, allowing its owner to make it a stronghold that's more inconvenient than usual to attack and seize. As for the factions themselves, they also come with some very new and interesting variants for the core game. The most interesting aspect of the Talaxu is the Face Tensors, in which is a new traitor mechanic for the game, in which other faction leaders are revealed to be imposters as opposed to traitors. The Talaxu player gains three traitor cards that can be played if one leader from their hand is leading another player's army who wins a battle. When that happens, most of the spoils of the victory still go to the other faction player, but the leader themselves is sent to the tanks, and the troops that would normally occupy the space are instead sent to the reserves and replaced instead by Talaxio troops, which is a clear and clinical way to steal a victory or gain sudden advantage. The most interesting part of the Ixian, of course, is the mobile fortress they begin with, but they also have an interesting variant in the makeup of their army. It's composed of cyborgs and suboids. The cyborgs, like the Emperor's Sadukar, are worth twice the value of normal troops, but can also travel two spaces and carry up to three spice each. Their only downfall is that the Ixian player only has seven of them. The suboids are only worth half a regular troop, but they number 13 in total, and can be used in place of a cyborg when the Ixian player experiences troop losses. They also can only travel two spaces on the map when accompanied by a cyborg token. To sum up, this is a fantastic little expansion that greatly enhances the core game without breaking it, and the variance of the two new factions adds some great new dynamics to the play, depending of course on the other factions in play. It is something I would most definitely recommend if you are a fan of the original Dune game, or indeed of the Dune franchise itself. If, however, you are not fortunate enough to own a copy of this game, you may yet be in luck. The Lucky Roll runs regular competitions for our subscribers, and our current competition has not only one, but two different copies of the Dune board game up for grabs for you to win. To be in with a chance to win, please click the link below the video to learn how to enter. 
Otherwise, this is Sean from The Lucky Roll. If you enjoyed this review, please like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, good luck, God bless, and stay safe.